This week I was invited on the 12 Talk podcast, really good UK-based Seahawks podcast. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check out our full conversation. It's an hour long. Uh, really would suggest checking it out. Lots of good Seahawks talk there. But we talked about leadership. We talked about this guy. And we talked about the guy at the far end of my room, which you might just be able to see there as well. And why the Seahawks really miss guys like that right now. So check this clip out. Then go and watch the full podcast, the 12 Talk podcast. Like I said, link in the description. If you're going to talk about leadership, the first thing you have to do is define leadership. What is leadership? Because I think too often leadership, and this is probably happens within GMs and, and scouting rooms as well, as to people will look for maybe the most intelligent player, the player who turns up to the meetings on time, the, the player who speaks well or is considered to have a high football IQ. Leadership's not something you can easily define. The two greatest leaders that the Seahawks have had are two players who you would not point at as natural, quote unquote, leaders who would be a captain on most teams. Marshawn Lynch was one of the best leaders this franchise mm -hmm. ever had. And he's the antithesis of somebody <laughs> who would be considered someone who is going to lead because he breaks the rules, he plays to his own tune, he doesn't listen to authority figures, he probably messes around if he even turns up to meetings. He, You know, all of that stuff. He is basically uncontrollable. But he would go out onto that field and every single one of the players on the Seahawks team knew that he was going to go to war with them and he was going to give them absolutely everything. And you know what? The other team are going to feel his presence. That's leadership. On the other side of the ball, you had Cam Chancellor. Cam Chancellor was not the kind of person who would stand up and be, feel very comfortable giving a speech in a locker room. He wasn't. He hated doing that. But he got out on the field, and here he is, this six foot three, six foot four, insane, monstrous safety who just, just pumped terror into the opponent and would absolutely knock someone's head off on a crossing route, and the whole of the Seahawks sideline would explode because of what he was doing. That's leadership. The problem the Seahawks have right now is they don't have anybody who does that. They don't have anybody who, when they get on the field, everybody says, that guy's going to take us to the promised land. They just don't. There's nobody that can rally around. It's not about how they speak. It's not about what they say in the locker room. It's about when they get on that field, who is going to be the guy. They don't have any of those guys right now. They have Geno Smith, who's sulking on the sideline and it wears his heart on his sleeve, so when things go wrong, his body language stinks. DK's ripping off a headset and yelling at Ryan Grubb and telling him to throw a post route or something or get throw beyond the sticks, whatever he was saying. You know, the defenders, like Jaron Reeds, can be that kind of a guy sometimes, but there's nobody else on the defense who's going to gonna go and level somebody, and then the rest of the team are like, come on, he's, you know, he's leading the way there. There's nothing. So unless you have those players... It ain't going to happen. You watch the Ravens on Sunday. Cal Hamilton came up and absolutely demolished somebody. And the whole of the Ravens sideline just went crazy. The refs flew a flag. They picked it up and said, actually, it's a legal hit. It's one of the best hits you'll see in the last 10 years. It was perfectly legal and it was crunching and it was devastating. Nobody does that for the Seahawks anymore. That's leadership and they don't have it.